Hi, so I'm here. I'm sat outside Sheffield Gender Identity Clinic and I'm going to talk to you about some of the worst things about transition. Now, although I'm sat outside here, in truth, the clinic wasn't that bad for me. I was a binary trans woman. I dressed in a feminine way and I kind of met, met their stereotypes. So, in terms of clinical progress, it was quite easy but it's always the admin details that get you. And this is kind of part of the thing that I found the worst thing about transition, is that it never, ever stops, it never lets up. You've got to get through your normal life. Everything's falling apart. And at the same time, you've got to manage your own medical transition. Because they won't do it for you, they don't do it. So I've moved inside because it's raining and it's cold and it's going to muss me air up. So we'll have none of that, thank you. Um, transition. The worst things. The, the clinics. You've got to chase them. You can't. You've got to manage your own transition. You've got to get through life like everyone else does. You know, all the normal stresses. Getting a job. Living. Finding money. Then you've got to manage your transition because... If you leave it to the GPs and the clinics, nothing happens. You've got to chase them. You've got to know what's next, what you've got to do. You've got to tell them what you want. You know, it's not quite why we have to go and see them. It is, is I don't understand because we're just telling them what we know. And they go, yeah, yeah, okay. And they don't. No, you can't. It's gatekeeping. But it's for me the worst part of transition is the endless grinding of it takes ages, it takes years and every day you're getting up and you look in the mirror and you get the dysphoria attack and you think shit I look like a bloke and you go out anyway and you go to work or whatever and you get to work and someone misgenders you and you know someone calls you a bloke and you think yeah you're probably right and you feel like shit and then you get on with your day and then something else happens and it's microaggression after microaggression and it's awful and you come off and you go on the internet and then there's some one spouting turfisms at you and telling you you're invalid and they know better than you and you never you know oh I'm not gonna say it fuck you turfs But it sticks, you know, everything they did say stick in my head. Yeah, it hurts, don't worry. I had some things go wrong during my transition. I mean, it took me a year to get to the gender clinic in the first place. I had to get mentally health checked first. <sighs> Laser didn't work on my face, so I had to have electrolysis. And I only managed, I think, 100 hours of that before I ran out of money, so I still have hairs on my face, even now. I can't afford to get rid of them. I've had facial surgery. I had um, three operations. Part of the first one was to try and correct the um, missing hair I had because I'd left transition so long. I had a balloon put in my head. Um, that was inflated each day using saline um, for 10 weeks and then it was taken out. And that went wrong because um, the skin on my scalp stretched too much because it was being expanded too much and behind me I couldn't check. There's obviously no help to, no nurse to come and look at you and see if it's alright. You're on your own because you're paying for yourself and in a foreign clinic paying privately to go abroad on my own to a clinic, have surgery on my face and then sit in a apartment block in Antwerp for two weeks crying my eyes out because I was so swollen and hurting and 
on my own. That's hard. Anyway, so that stretched the skin and the skin died. So made my hair actually worse. So the bit of scalp with the hair on, the hair died. So that was that. Um, my nose went a bit wrong. I had to have another operation on that. The surgeon made a mistake during that third operation and went to the side of my nose. Um, even now this, this side of my nose is still half blocked all the time. But it does make a great whistling sound sometimes if my daughter likes. Um, GRS, one in whatever hundred chance that you lose some sensation. Yep, that was me, one in a hundred. That's what's hard about transition. Every day, get up, keep going, go to bed, get up, keep going, go to bed. And it gets easier, it really does. But you can't forget. People say, and trans people have mental illness, but I disagree. Trans people have some of the strongest minds of anybody. We're not brave because we've got no choice, but getting through transition, through this life, is so bloody hard, and we do it. And we should be proud of that. Don't call me ill. Don't call me brave. Just respect me. That's all.